Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to go through the companion notebook and slides prepared for week four contents, uh, in which we will see a bit of EM algorithm and then one numerical on Bayesian estimation. So coming to EM algorithm, first we are going to initialize our parameters. So these parameters are presented as theta naught, where uh, zero indicates the iteration number. So this includes mu one zero to mu k zero, where uh, 1 to k indicates the distributions, the k distributions that we have and 0 is again the iteration number. Likewise, we have parameters, the variance parameter from sigma 1 square to sigma k square and pi 1 0 to pi k 0, where the value of pi indicates the probability that a given point comes from the kth distribution. So once we have initialized our parameters, we are going to go to the expectation and the maximization step. So in the expectation step, we are going to find the values of lambda, which are the artificial parameters that we had uh, introduced uh, for our uh, modified maximum likelihood problem. So once we get the values of lambda, we are then again going to treat these lambda values as a constant and we are going to do the maximization step where we are going to get the new values of the parameters mu, sigma and pi. Then we repeat these steps until our convergence criterion is satisfied. So when we have theta t plus 1 minus theta t, when we find that the norm of this is lesser than the tolerance parameter epsilon, we can say that our algorithm is converged. First let us observe a data set. As you can see we have 6 points here, minus 1.5, minus 1, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1 and 1.5. We are going to have a look at it in the form of a graph and also with the parameters on the side as shown. So these are random initializations for the parameters mu, sigma, square and pi. So now that we have this, our next step is to find the values of lambda. So this is the closed form uh, solution or closed form expression we get for lambda uh, when we treat the parameters mu, sigma, square and pi as constant and we want to fill this table. So what is this table? This indicates that uh, there are 6 points uh, which are presented by i and there are going to be 2 distributions indicated by k. Lambda 1 1 indicates the probability that point 1 uh, belongs to distribution 1. Likewise we have the 2 probability values for each of the 6 points. So let us substitute uh, the values of mu, sigma, pi and x for uh, the first point and find the value of lambda 1 1. So this is how it will look on substitution and when we do it for all the points, these are the values that we get. Uh, now that we have the values of lambda, our next step is the maximization step where we find new values of the parameters. So the closed form of the par parameters mu, sigma, square and pi are as shown and now we need to do the substitution. So for uh, mu1, uh, this is the expression that we have. We are going to take the lambda values corresponding to uh, lambda1 values that are the probabilities of the points in the uh, first distribution and on substitution we get this to be the value of uh, mu1. So this is the mean of uh, the first distribution. Likewise we are going to find the value for the second distribution and our next step is to find the values of sigma square. So sigma square 1 is going to look as such and this is sigma square 2. Now we need to find the values of pi and pi is given by this expression and now that we have this, uh, we have to repeat these two steps until our convergence criteria is satisfied. So for this given example, we are going to run these steps for 5 iterations because post that we are going to see that the change in values is going to be negligible. So in the first iteration, uh, this is the values for which we, uh, this is the values that we obtained by substitution as we saw previously. Uh, these are the uh, lambda values and the parameter values. Now as we progress further, we are going to see that the values uh, uh, keep uh, changing and finally we are going to have some sort of a converged value. So in this iteration, the values for uh, these three points has increased, whereas for these three it has decreased. The values of mu and uh, 
sigma square also are changing. So as I go towards iteration 5, I can see that uh, this indicates that the points 1, 2, 3 are uh, likely to have uh, been in the first distribution whereas points 4, 5, 6 are likely to have come from the second distribution. And the mu and sigma values also seem to have converged and if we were to have a visual representation after convergence, this is the image that we get. Uh, so, with this we can see that for the distributions, uh, the they are centered around minus 1 and 1 with the variance also as seen. So, this is again the final values after convergence. Uh, we will now look at a numerical on uh, Bayesian estimation. Uh, so, we have this problem where uh, we are given a beta prior with uh, alpha value to be 3 and beta value to be 2 and this is the data set that we are given. So, we now need to find a point estimate for the parameter P of Bernoulli distribution and uh, we, are, we have to use the expectation of the posterior as our uh, method of estimation. So, for uh, beta distribution happens to be the conjugate prior for Bernoulli distribution. So, if we have uh, a beta prior alpha beta and uh, along with the data we are going to get a beta posterior of alpha plus n1 comma beta plus n0. So, this n1 indicates the number of 1s in the data set and n0 indicates the number of zeros in the data set. Now, first we are going to find the posterior uh, distribution. It is of beta n1 plus alpha comma n0 plus beta. So, in this uh, data set we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ones and the alpha value is 3. So, 8 plus 3 is going to be 11 and 5 zeros and beta value being 2, we are going to get n0 plus beta as 7. So, now that we have our posterior distribution, we need to find the expectation of the posterior and that is going to be our estimate for the parameter. So, expectation of the posterior is given by alpha plus n1 in the numerator divided by alpha plus n1 plus beta plus n0 in the denominator. So, alpha plus n1 is 11 and the denominator is the sum of both these and that is going to be 18 and the value comes out to be 0 0.61. For the EM algorithm that we have seen in the slides, we are now going to have a look at it through code. In the first cell, we are going to import the necessary libraries with numpy being the primary one. Firstly, we are going to assign the 6 points to a variable x. After that, our step is to initialize the parameter values and then do the e step and the m step. So, we are going to initialize the parameter values to theta 0 as shown. And now that we have done it, our, we are going to perform the e step where we are going to find the values of lambda. So, this lambda expression has this Gaussian term for which we are going to use a function Gaussian and then we are going to use it. Uh, we are going to substitute it in our E step. So, this E step is going to return this variable lamb which is going to contain all the lambda values. Once we have the lambda values, we are going to use it in the close from expressions of the parameters. So, this is going to be the M step. So, in the M step, we are going to find the new mu uh, variance sigma square and pi and we are going to uh, store it all. Then we need to repeat these two steps until the convergence criterion is satisfied. So, in this case we are going to perform these steps for 8 iteration and because we will notice we will see that the epsilon value uh, tends to be 0 after this. So, for 8 iteration initially uh, we st store the results of E step the uh, ex except the expectation step in lambda k and then we are going to use that in the m step in the maximization step and store it in theta k. And then we are going to test for the uh, convergence criteria in this line and then if convergence criteria is satisfied we can stop. So, let us have a look at the results. So, initially when we find the lambda k i values, these are the values of lambda that we get and these lambda values are passed in the closed form expressions to get the theta values. So, we had our initial theta values in that are stored in theta k minus 1 and this is the theta k values that we calculated now and we found the value uh, to be 0 
and as we perform it for subsequent iteration, uh, we see that the value of uh, the convergence criterion uh, keeps reducing. And now in case say our epsilon value was something like 0 0.005, uh, we see that in that case we would have stopped after the fifth iteration. So for this example, we have taken it until 8 iteration when we end up seeing that the value near 0. That is it for this notebook. Thank you.